Do you know what this is? It's called a mezuzah. It contains two very important Hebrew prayers, the Shema and the Viahafta. In this video, I'm going to give my own interpretation or translation of those two prayers because I think they're very important. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Ve'ahavta Et Adonai Elohecha Uvchol Levavcha Uvchol Navshecha Uvchol Meodecha Vehayu Hadivarim Haile Asher Anohi Mitzavcha Hayom Al Levavecha Vershinan Tam Levanecha Vidibarta Bam Beshiftecha Bavitecha Uvlechtecha Vaderech Uvshachbecha Uvkumecha Ukshartam Leot Al Yadecha Vehayule Totafot Bene Necha Uchtaftam Al Mizuzot Betecha Uvisharecha So what does all that mean? Well, the most important part comes in the first six words called the Shema. Shema means listen. It goes, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Listen, Israel, Adonai, our God, Adonai is one. The first thing to notice is that the core idea of the prayer, its main argument, comes in the last two words, Adonai Echad. Echad means one, but Adonai is not so easy to translate. First of all, this word is not pronounced Adonai. This is how you spell Adonai in Hebrew. This word is called the Tetragrammaton, and it's pronounced Yahweh or Yehovah, although it's never spoken aloud in a religious context. Instead, it's replaced with a substitute, like Adonai. The word Adonai does roughly translate to Lord in English, which is why in English versions of the Bible everybody's always talking about the Lord, as if God were some sort of bearded king in the sky. But that is some patriarchal nonsense, and I don't want to interpret it that way, and I don't have to. We're dealing with translation here. Meaning is always fluid, and it isn't in the letters, it's what the letters point to. Translation is the reason why the Tetragrammaton isn't pronounced in the first place. It's important to remember that Judaism hasn't always been a monotheistic religion. It developed into one over time. There was a time when Yahweh was just another local god king like Zeus or Thor. As monotheism was developing, the idea of Yahweh expanded. The Hebrew priests realized that the idea of Yahweh was far too vast to be captured by a single name or interpretation. So instead, they took their name and made it unpronounceable, turned it just into a pointer for an idea which was too infinite to be understandable. And this means we can translate the Tetragrammaton however we like. How exciting! English has this word, infinity, which I think does a much better job at pointing to the unexpressible meaning of Yahweh than some patriarchal garbage word like Lord. Infinity is pretty mysterious. We're not really sure what it is. We've got these mathematical symbols for it, and I can show you these gifts, but none of these things really capture the idea. They just point out the property that whatever infinity is, it's constantly going over its own own boundaries. Infinity can't really be symbolized properly because any symbol would be too confining. This is why the word infinity is actually a really good analog to the Hebrew tetragrammaton. So, if you'll bear with me for a moment and imagine that this is the same thing as this, what does that mean the Shema is saying? Well, Adonai Echad. Infinity is one. What? This makes no sense! Infinity is all of the things, and one is just one of the things. How could they be the same thing? But that's actually the point. Everything is the same thing. We're all part of infinity, right? So I'm a thing. That makes sense. 
and and you're a thing. We're both we're both things, right? And so that means we're going to be within the set of everything. So that means that you and I are the same thing. Everything is us. Everything is one. So I just said those things, but that doesn't mean I understand them. I can say that you and I are part of infinity, and so is this camera, and so are those flowers, and so is the internet, but saying those things is very different from experiencing them, from viscerally feeling them in your body. And this is the essence of religious experience, feeling in your body that you are part of the totality of everything. This is not something you can experience every day. It would be very overwhelming. Maybe if you're Jesus or Buddha or Muhammad, you can live your entire life experiencing being one with everything. But for most of us, it would just be too much. Our minds would melt and blend with everything else. My point is this. This statement, Adonai Echad, is a really trippy idea. It's difficult to know what to do with it. And this is where the rest of the prayer, the Via Hafta, comes in. It's a set of instructions on how to incorporate the infinite into your regular life. This is what the Via Hafta says. It says, you shall love infinity, God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words, the words that say, Adonai Echad, infinity is one, these words, you're gonna teach them to your children. And you're gonna repeat them to yourself when you're at home. And you're gonna repeat them when you're traveling. And you're gonna say them when you wake up, and you're gonna say them when you go to bed, you're going to repeat and repeat and repeat. And this is how you will understand. This is the essence of the Jewish religion. It's the essence of every religion. First comes recognition of the infinite, and then comes a system, a methodology for integrating the infinite into the rest of your life. Here's what it says next. You shall tie these words as a symbol on your hand, and it shall be placed between your eyes. The word in the prayer, letotafot, has actually come to refer to this object, tefillin, which contains scrolls of the Shema and the Via Hafta inside it. Practicing Jews will wrap it around their hand and place it on their forehead as they recite the prayers. And this word, mezuzot, literally means doorposts, and it's come to represent this object, a mezuzah, which also contains the Shema and the Via Hafta and is placed on Jewish doorposts. My point in all this is to try to give you a meaningful translation. The Shema is often used to argue for Jewish exceptionalism. The Tetragrammaton is translated as Lord, and then the statement, the Lord is one, is meant to mean that my concept of God is the only valid concept of God, and if you don't agree with me, then I'm justified in bulldozing your house and trapping you behind a concrete wall. That interpretation of the prayer is available if you think it's useful, and it was definitely useful to some very violent groups of people in the past, but I don't think it's very useful today. This prayer is one of the most successful memes in all of human history. People were reciting it over 2,000 years ago, and they're still reciting it today. That's because the prayer contains instructions to copy itself. You shall teach these words to your children. But it's not just that the prayer asks you to copy it. I could ask you to share this video, but you're not going to do it unless you find the words that I'm saying to be meaningful. And meaning is a very tricky thing. The power of this prayer comes from the fact that this word is both universal and undefinable. The word God means everything, and so it means nothing. The only way to really understand that sentence is to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. Repeat it when you're home, and repeat it when you're traveling. Repeat it when you wake up, and repeat it when you go to bed. I've repeated that phrase as many times as this video has views. If you want to hear me repeat more ideas like this, click subscribe. Bye! Bye!